Hello and good morning. This morning, we're going to be going over FreeCodeCamp.com Intermediate Algorithm Scripting Challenge Different to Arrays. I think that's how you say it. Essentially, we're going to be going through, taking two arrays, uh, putting them together, and canceling out values that are the same. So let me share my screen, and then we will work through this. And as usual, there's a few things I would like to go over first. We're going to start off with the actual challenge itself. And as you can see, we have a function here where we're going to be taking in two arrays. Um, and we want to find, we want to return out of this function what is different between these two arrays into a new array. So they've already given us a new array. And they want to return this new array, but they only want what's different between these. And you can see we have our hints down the side here. And what do they want? Well, let's see. They want us to take a look at comparison operators, slice, filter, index of, and concat. And actually, we're going to need all of these. So I'm going to go over them for you. First, all right, comparison operators. I'm not sure if I've actually gone through this in any kind of detail. But essentially, um, when we're looking at the equals versus the, the equals, um, basically the difference being if you're taking a look at this you know double equal sign you're looking at comparing them but you don't really care if say one's a string and one's an a, um, integer whereas the strictly equals they need to be exactly equals all right so you're looking at you know three equals three the integer is true whereas like three versus the string integer three um, that is going to be false okay next um, slice and slice we've used a bunch of times before so we're going to continue using it now remember it's an array method and so when we call slice we can take in up to two parameters the first parameter it's going to take in is going to be where we're going to begin the slice and the optional second is where we end now sometimes um, I've seen people mix up slice and splice and a good way to think of slice is if you're going to be taking a slice of pie Right, whatever you're going to begin and end, that's the piece that you're going to take. So that's the piece you're going to keep. All right, so that's going to be the slice. So that's going to be the important thing there. Um, I'm going to skip over filter for a minute. It's a little more complex. Uh, we're going to go to index of. Now, index of is another array method, whereas you can put in as a parameter here. All right, the search element. So you just have a search element. And then you have an optional uh, from index, um, which you could use here, but we're not going to be using that. We're only going to be using one parameter, which is the actual value itself. So in this array, you're looking at index of two, okay, from that array. And it's saying two is at the zeroth index of that array. However, if you put in a value of seven, you will get returned a negative one. Now, what does negative one mean? Just the element does not exist in this array, which is important because that's gonna that's what we're gonna be using for our logic. Okay. Uh, next is concat when you're looking at concatenating or adding these two arrays together, and that's part of our challenge actually is to uh, take two arrays and stick them together and then see if there's any repeating values. So that's what we're gonna do. So logically, we're gonna start off here. And we're going to say, um, the first thing we want to do is, uh, I'll say, add the base together, together, all right, so we want to add them together. And then all we want to do is check for repeats. When I say repeats, I mean repeating values, so I'm going to make it repeating values all right so in order to do this we came up with a uh, they, they, they've already established for us a new array so why don't we just take this new array instead of making it empty oh, and why don't we just say arr one cat arr two now, if we return our new array, let's see what we get. 
All right, so now we have a new array with everything kind of squished together in it. All right, so how do we want to check for repeating values? All right, well, the way that I'm going to be checking for repeating values, I'm not going to return this new array, per se. I want to return this new array, and I'm going to be applying the filter method on it. Okay, now filter. Now filter itself, all right, is an array method. And this array method uh, creates a new array with all elements that pass the test implemented by the provided function. What that means is that the array method filter is going to filter out, okay, an array uh, based on things that pass the test. And we're going to be using a function, right, call back to um, test all the values to make sure that they pass our test. And what is our test going to be? Essentially, our test needs to be are there any repeating values? And then don't add them to the new array. So we only want unique values in the new array. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we need to scroll down a little bit more here and really take a look at our parameters. So first off, we have a callback. And now a callback, I'm not sure if I've explained this before, but a, a, a callback essentially is just a function. So don't get caught up on that. Um, you can just use it as an anonymous function for right now. And we start off with a function, and that function or callback is going to have three arguments that it takes in. Okay, so this array method right, has a parameter. One of the parameters is a function, and that function itself is going to have already built in three arguments. Okay, and those arguments are all right. They're you know one, two, three. Um, the first one is the current element being processed by the uh, array or that object of that array. Okay, so if we take a look at um, here is is big enough filter. And this function is big enough is only going to be looking at the value, okay, or the element itself. All right. And it says return if value is greater than or equal to 10. So when we filter out this array here, okay, you call filter is big enough, okay, which is the callback. It's going to bounce back up here and say, okay, what is the first uh argument that's passed in, which is going to be value. Okay, so what is the value of the first one here? 12 is 12 greater than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. We'll pass it to a new array. How about five? Five is the value. Is five greater than or equal to 10? No, it's not. So it will not get passed to the next array. All right, so that should make sense to you. So that's what we're doing here. So we start off with a value. Then we have the index or the current index number of that value and the array itself. So we can apply array methods inside of the actual uh, callback or the actual function itself, which is going to be important because we're going to be using array methods inside of this function that are going to refer to uh, the uh, original new array first. Okay, because remember, filter returns a new array. So when I say new array dot filter, all right, it's going to return. It's not going to uh, change the new array itself. It's just going to pass back a new array that's different than new array. We should probably change that name to like uh, something else. But anyway, it'll work the same way. So you're looking at filter, and the filter itself can take in a function or just an anonymous function. You can write it like this, or you could bounce out and do a new anonymous function, uh, which we can do a little bit later on. Um, but for now, we're just going to say function. OK. And that function, all right, make sure that you know, uh, is going to take in all right, three arguments. OK, the first one that's going to be built into filter, so just how filter is made here, is value. So it's going to go through every element of the array. And this is going to be the actual value of the array. Okay. The next uh, thing that it takes in is the index or the index number. So index. And now I don't have to use uh, these argument names here. I could just say ABC. Uh, but as we as I start using these things later, it just makes more sense to call them what they are just so it makes it easier to read. Plus, if, I, if you go back to this and use this as a reference later, it'll make a lot more sense to you. And then you can remember what you did.
and then array, which is the actual array itself. Okay, so we have that. So now, oh boy, so now we have an opening and a closing here. So let's make sure we have an opening and closing for filter, okay, which is what I just did there. So now we have this filter opening and closing, but now function needs an opening and closing brace. So I'm gonna bounce that all the way down there. Just trying to keep track of all of my uh, proper syntax so I don't get any syntax errors. So I'm gonna return this new array, a new filtered array from this value here and I need, to, need things to pass a test, okay? Well, what is the test going to be? All right, if there's any repeating values, we're gonna toss them out. So it's pretty simple. I can just use a simple if statement. Well, simple if statement is gonna be a, it's not really a simple if statement, but it is an if statement. And inside of that if statement, okay, we're gonna have if whatever in here is true, right then we're just going to return the value so logically now um, filter is going to check every thing in this array and if it passes this if statement okay so if this is true it's going to return that value so whatever is in between these parentheses has to say or has to test for um, is the is the value um, anywhere else in the array? For example, when we check one down here, right? As we start this filter, we're going to get one in, and I need it to check everything else in the array. And if it sees another one, right, it has to show up false. Okay, so what is going to be true? How are we going to do this? Well, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to be using slice. Remember, slice is the piece that you want to keep, okay? And so since we have an array as something that we can take in here, since the array is already built in, we can actually use array methods. So array.slice, okay? <clears throat> and slice, what does slice take in now? So slice takes in right a beginning and an optional end all right so you know slice beginning and end for example here's the beginning and an end we're saying one and three and the piece i want to keep has the index of one so zero index one index and it slices before it remember all right then go all the way to three zero one two three index slice before it and what are you going to keep one and two okay so let's go back and let's take a look at this. Um, so let's start from zero and slice all the way up to the index where we are. Okay. So zero, comma, index. And again, index is the actual index number. And this argument I just called index just to make sure everything reads real nice. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking everything from the beginning of the array up to whatever I'm testing. So in the case of this first value here, it's going to go from zero to the index value of zero, which is the first thing. And so I'm actually going to be um, looking at nothing here to begin with because there's nothing there. However, if I get up to this one, its index value is zero, one, two, three, four. So it's going to slice from zero to one, two, three, uh, four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. And it's going to slice here. And it's going to check everything before it, okay? And say, okay, is there a one there? Yes or no? If there is, all right, then we don't want to keep it. All right, so how do we say that? So from zero to the index, we can use index of, okay, so we can say the index of that value. So if the index of that value is found, it's going to spit back a number. But if the value is not found in that slice, all right, it's going to return a negative one. So we want it to return a negative one because that means it's not present. 
All right. So if we say dot index of value is exactly equal to negative one. Okay. Essentially, what we're saying here is we're going to slice from zero to the index, everything before that value. All right. And if the index of that value is negative one, which means it's not present. So if we can't find that value anywhere else, then we pass that value back to our new array. All right. Which then gets returned out of our function. All right. Well, that only takes care of the values before. Okay. So if we look at, like, say, five here, um, it's zero, one, two, three. It has an index number of three. Well, if you look at it here, it's going to say that, um, well, we have one, two, three before it, and that's the slice we're looking at. Therefore, um, it, five is not present in that slice, and it's going to spit five back out. Well, there's a problem because there's also a five after it. So how do we check things after it? Well, what we can do is we can say, and so we have to pass the test before and pass a test after. And again, we can use this array method because the array, all right, is part of the arguments being passed into our function. So array dot slice. All right, and I'm, I'm going to leave that empty for now um, because it's going to be the same as all of this stuff. So we're going to slice, then we're going to take the index dot index of value. And then that has to be exactly equal to negative one. Now, what do we want to slice here? So we already know that we did everything before. Now we need everything after. So how do we get everything after? Well, that's a little easier because we want to include in that slice. Okay, what do we want to include in that slice? So if we just go before, let's go over to slice. If we slice from the index, so let's say that the what we're checking for here is this two. All right, this number two happens to be the two index. We want to we don't want to slice before this two. All right, if we slice right at the index two, uh, two is going to be included in our test, okay? And it's always going to be present because the chunk that we're testing is always going to include the value itself. We want to slice after that two, so let's say. So how do we do that? Well, we can just add one to the index value. So let's just do that. So we can just say from index plus one. Okay. And since we're going after, all right, we're checking everything after, we can just say index plus one as a begin, and we don't need an end because it's just going to go all the way to the end of the array. All right. And so now if I don't have any syntax errors, we should check everything before. Is it present? If it's not, we're good. And check everything after. Is it present? No? Good. Keep it. So let's see. All right, and you're all out of gum. I guess that's a good thing. Okay, so you can see here we've done the same thing here, and um, we even passed string values to it. So I know a lot of times I was using numbers, but it's this works um, the same for string values as it does for numbers, because we're still checking to see that the value itself um, is exactly equal to what we want. So. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you next time.